everybody, it's Snicket here. Today I'll be doing the clan generator challenge. For my clan, I got Birch Clan, the dreary and above average. I kind of ignored the description for the clan. Before we get to the speed paints, I want to explain something. Birch Clan uses a system of ear notches to display rank. An apprentice has one ear notch, a warrior has two ear notches, a deputy has three, and a leader has four. An elder has however many notches they had on their ear before they retired on one ear, and a single notch on the other. This system was put in place by the cat who was leader before Birch Clan's current leader, Lionstar. Lionstar became leader of Birch Clan about a year ago and is taking care of the clan well. He chose Birchfoot to be the deputy because he is hardworking, but Lionstar wonders if he made the right choice. He has a great fear of foxes because they are frequently spotted on Birch Clan territory, and more than one of his clanmates has suffered at the cause of the fox. He is the son of Swan Whisker. He is 73 moons old. And that's the Lion Star. Next up, we have Birchfoot, the deputy of Birch Clan. Birchfoot is a very hardworking deputy. He goes on, on almost every border patrol. None of the members of his clan know why. The real reason he patrols so often is because as a kit, he was kidnapped by an enemy clan and he does not want the same fate to befall the kits of his clan. He feels he is responsible for Black Ear's injuries because the day before, he had forgot to send a patrol to mark the border near where the attack took place. The foxes usually shy away from the places that the cats have marked. It will be quite a while before he has to become the leader of Birch Clan, but his clanmates become a little uneasy at the thought of Birchfoot being next in line for leadership. He is 72 moons old. He has siblings with Nightface and Crowthroat. The next drawing is of Spiderclaw, the medicine cat. Spiderclaw has not been a medicine cat for long. As an apprentice, he trained to be a warrior for a short time, but he discovered his skill and love for the role of medicine cat when he had to stay in the medicine den because of an injury. He sometimes gets mistaken for an apprentice at gatherings because of his small size and single notch in his ear that he received as a warrior's apprentice. He is looking for an apprentice to train. The suffix of his name is a product of tradition. Everyone in his family is destined to have the suffix claw. This is because one of his ancestors from many moons ago had the name Golden Claw. Everyone in Birch Clan, except for the Medicine Cat and Golden Claw, had come down with Green Cough. Golden Claw set out into the wintry forest and caught enough prey to last the entire clan two days. He distributed the prey to all the members of the clan and then went into the forest again to gather herbs. She knew exactly which herbs to gather, despite having no prior training as a medicine cat. She worked all throughout the night gathering herbs and catching prey for her sick clanmates, and thanks to her, Birch Clan was saved from extinction. Spiderclaw's aunt, Slugblaze, was the medicine cat before him. Next up we have the clan's most senior warrior, Ravenfang. Ravenfang is Spiderclaw and Garlic Claw's father and Gorse Claw's mate. He has trained many apprentices, including Tansy Briar, and will be going to the Elder's Den in a few moons. But for now, he's enjoying his last days as a warrior. Lionstar probably would have chosen him to be deputy if not for his age. He loves to show kits around camp for the first time and wishes that there were more young cats in the clan. He is 150 moons old. He is one of six black cats in the clan. I know other people who did the challenge got a lot of black cats in their clan. I don't think I got a terribly large amount. Next, we have Raven's Fang's former apprentice, Tansy Briar. Tansy Briar spent her first 14 moons as a kitty pet named Sandy. Her owners threw her out of the monster on the side of the Thunderpath that was near Birch Clan territory fell hard on one of her hind legs and she wasn't able to stand up. It was then that Raven Fang found her. He helped her walk to the Birch Clan camp for Slug Blaze, the medicine cat at the time, tended to her injuries. After her leg healed, she decided she would join the clan. Though she was well past apprentice age, she still had to be trained. Raven Fang mentored her and she quickly showed skills for leaping and ambushing. She feels that she owes a great debt to her mate, Black Ear, because he saved her from a fox attack when she was an apprentice. 
She became a warrior four moons after she was apprenticed and was still one of the best hunters in the clan. She is a purebred Turkish Angora. She is a mother to Rosepaw, Cormorantpaw, and Foxpaw. She is 36 moons old. I really wish I had filmed the coloring process for her because it looks really nice and it was fun to do. And that's the only former kitty pet in the clan, Tansy Briar. Next up we have Nightface. She is an ambitious warrior who is very proud of her scars. She is a good fighter and loyal to her clan. She did not get stolen as a kit with Birchfoot because she had snuck out of camp that day. She is a bit jealous of her brother's position as deputy, but will support him if he ever needs it. She was mentored by Lionstar. She was an apprentice for a moon longer than Birchfoot because she kept sneaking out of camp to explore Birchclan territory. She is 72 moons old. I had a little bit of difficulty with placing the white markings on her pelt, but I think it turned out okay. Next we have Nightface's younger sister, Crowthroat. She wants Birch Clan to become nomadic and travel around the land, but has not spoken about this idea to anyone but her sister Nightface, who said that Lionstar, who is very tradition bound, would not be fond of the idea. This discouraged her to speak about her idea with anybody else. She has thought more than once about leaving the clan, but she fears that it would tear her siblings apart if she left. As a mentor to Cormorant Paw, she feels she is too young of a warrior to have an apprentice, and she worries how Cormorant Paw will fare if she leaves the clan behind. She is 60 moons old. Next up is Scarlet Claw, Spider Claw's sister. She is a little small for her age, just like her brother. She is Tansy Briar's best friend, and she helped show her how the society of Birch Clan worked when she first came to the clan. She can be depended on to train an apprentice when their mentor is busy or to gather herbs for her brother. She takes pride in her family's legacy and defends it fiercely when called upon. She is a mentor to Rosepaw, who Garlic Claw teaches well. She is 50 moons old. The next drawing is of Gorse Claw, Garlic Claw's mother. Gorse Claw is a mate to Raven Fang. She, like her daughter, is very proud of her family's legacy. She is an expert at the construction of the thorny walls around camp and is often spotted making minor adjustments to the briars and vines. Since she spends so much time tending to the walls of the camp, her fur is a bit more sparse and ungroomed than the fur of other cats. She is a mentor to Foxpaw. She knows Foxpaw looks up to her a lot and tries to be a good example for her. She enjoys spending time with her apprentice and will be one of the loudest voices calling Foxpaw's new name at her warrior ceremony. She is 95 moons old. Next up is Rosepaw, one of my favorite designs that I did in this challenge. Rosepaw is the daughter of Tansy, Briar, and Blackear, and the sister of Cormorantpaw and Foxpaw. She is large for an apprentice and has trouble sneaking up on prey because of her large size and long fur rustling the dry leaves of Birch Clan territory. She knows about her sister Cormorantpaw's wanderings outside of clan territory, but has never told a soul about it. She would hate to see her sister get in trouble for it. Her mentor is Garlic Claw. She is nearly done with her apprenticeship and is excited to receive her warrior name in a second notch in her ear and gain the responsibilities of a warrior. She is nine moons old. I will definitely be drawing her again sometime soon. The next apprentice is Cormorant Paw. 
Then I rated her and her sister Foxpaw separately because I felt that there weren't enough apprentices in the clan. Former Paw is the quickest of her sisters, Foxpaw and Rosepaw. She is mentored by Croto. We love to explore the clan's territory, sometimes even crossing the border and heading into the nearby Tule place to chat with her kitty pet friends, Simba, Kitty, and Beaks. Crowthroat was not Cormor and Paul's first choice of a mentor, but they are getting along fine. Her mother is Tansy Briar and her father is Black Ear. Her clanmates are always telling her that she looks just like her father, and she takes pride in this. She wishes her father was not in the Elder's Den all the time so then she could hunt with him, but she knows it is for his own good. She wishes there were some other apprentices in the clan besides her sisters. She is nine moons old. The next speed paint is of her sister, Foxpaw. Foxpaw is Gorseclaw's apprentice. She has a lot of respect for Gorseclaw and is eager to please her. She is a fast learner and the ideal first apprentice for a new warrior. She is the smallest of her sisters and has the best sense of smell. She often goes hunting with her mother and visits her father in the Elder's Den on a daily basis. She would never dream of leaving the clan's territory and knows nothing about her sister Cormorpaw's adventures beyond the border. She is nine moons old. And that's it for Foxpaw. I really like her color scheme. Next is Copperberry, the lone queen of Birch Clan, and her kits Spotted Kit, Misty Kit, and Wood Kit. Copperberry is mates with Lionstar. She came into the clan as a loner's kit along with her brother Black Ear, but doesn't remember anything outside of clan life. Mother, the loner, died shortly after they arrived in the clan from wounds from a fox attack that Copper Kit and Black Kit miraculously survived, but at the cost of her mother's fatal wounds and Black Kit's severe injuries. After this, Swan Whisker, a queen at the time, took her and her brother in. She did not spend much time in the nursery before becoming an apprentice alongside Lionpaw. She became a warrior and received the name Copperberry after her late mother, whose name was Elderberry. Copperberry is 40 moons old. Now it's time to talk about the kits. First kit is Spotted Kit. He is the runt of his litter, though not by much. He has a good sense of smell and is often tempted to roam beyond the nursery and explore. He rarely gives in to these temptations, though because he knows that the rules that the adults make are put in place for a reason. He is quite smart for his age. He is very playful and fast. He is three moons old. The next kit is Woodkit. Woodkit is very excited at the prospect of becoming an apprentice. The thought of having a notch in her ear fills her with pride. She is the only daughter of Lionstar and Copperberry among her brothers. She has never snuck out of the nursery, but that is only because her mother is extra watchful over her. She attempts to escape the nursery at least once every two days, and her siblings always talk her out of it. She is three moons old. Last kit is Misty Kit. On a field trip from the nursery to the medicine den, he showed signs of having a talent with herbs, and will probably be a medicine cat apprentice when the time comes. He is the largest of his siblings. He loves sleeping in the nursery and playing with leaves that blow through the entrance. If a warrior spots a colorful feather or interesting leaf while on patrol, they make sure to bring it back to Mysticate, who adds it to his collection of playthings. He's a little bit lazy, but nobody criticizes him for it. He is three moons old. And that's all for the Kids of Birch Clan. Next is the second oldest cat in Birch Clan, Slugblaze. Slugblaze used to be the medicine cat, but retired when she finished training Spiderclaw. She is Ravenfang's sister. Slugblaze never figured out the meaning behind her name, as her mother unfortunately passed away just after naming her and her brother as kids. The apprentices of the clan often come to her for stories. She acts like it's a chore, but actually really enjoys telling the stories of the clan. She feels that those stories will inspire the younger generation and help keep the stories alive through word of mouth. She thinks her brother has been a warrior for too long and is looking forward to sharing more conversations with him in the Elder's Den. She is 150 moons old.
The next cat is the mother of Lionstar and the oldest cat in Birch Clan, Swan Whisker. She is 173 moons old. As a warrior, she was known for her swift and strong fighting style she always used to defeat cats in battle. She enjoys spending time with the other elders and going on top of the elders' den to bask in the sun. Not many know who her mate was, and that was because he was from a different clan. Luckily, she was able to keep this secret under wraps, and only her son Lionstar and the former medicine cat Slug Blaze know. Her mate's name was Spider Nose. Swan Whisker knows that she is going to be joining Star Clan soon, and with her mate dead and her grandkids nearing apprentice age, she is fine with that. The next cat is Black Ear, father to Rosepaw, Cormorant Paw, and Foxpaw. He was brought to the clan with his sister Copperberry as a loner's kid. After his mother died from severe wounds from the fox attack, Swan Whisker took him and his sister in. He had to spend a lot of time in the medicine den as a kid because of his injuries from the fox attack. By the time he was eight moons old, Slug Blaze, who was the medicine cat at the time, had healed his injuries well enough for him to be able to start his apprentice training. While he was in the medicine den, he bonded with Tansy Briar, who was there because of her injured leg. They became apprentices together. Black Ear was mentored by Garlic Claw, and Tansy Briar was mentored by Raven Fang. One day, him and Tansy Briar were hunting by themselves just before dusk. They had caught two rabbits and a chipmunk and were quite proud of themselves. They were so busy talking about their catches that they didn't notice the fox crouching in the bushes on the other side of the path. It leapt at them, and the two apprentices both dropped their prey and started running. The fox chased Tansy Briar and Black Ear until it had them cornered in a small gorge on the edge of Birch Clan territory. The fox lunged at Tansy Briar first, but she suffered no injury. This was because Black Ear leapt in front of her and took the blow for her. Luckily, Lion Star's evening patrol was nearby, and Lion Star, Nightface, and Ravenfang were able to fight off the fox. Black Ear was immediately rushed back to camp. Slowblaze took one look at his injuries and sadly announced that he could never become a warrior. He stayed in the medicine den for a long time while Tansy Briar received her warrior name. She often visited him and spoke to him about how life in the clan was going. Moons later, he was finally able to leave the medicine den. He received a warrior name despite never completing his training. He then moved to the elder's den. When Tansy Briar told him that she was going to have his kids, he was overjoyed. He had always wanted kids of his own, but was sad he would never be able to train with them. His thick fur hides most of his scars. His daughter, Foxpot, is named in honor of how his mother died, how he received his crippling injuries, and how many great cats in the history of Birch Clan met their demise. He is 40 moons old. I decided to use a kitty pet generator to generate a couple of extra kitty pets and loaners to draw. The first of these is a kitty pet named Simba. He is part of Cormorant Paw's group of kitty pet friends. Before he was friends with Cormorant Paw, he was friends with Kitty, another kitty pet who lived just down the street from him. When Cormorant Paw first met them, Kitty and Simba immediately made friends with her. There were not many cats Simba and Kitty's age around Tulip Place, so they sprang at the opportunity to make a new friend. But lately, Simba is having his doubts about whether he should remain friends with Cormorant Paw. She has dragged their group into some dangerous situations, forcing them to race across Thunder Pass and enter the forest which Simba has been afraid of ever since he was a kid. He always wears his harness because it makes him feel safe. He is a so kick cat. He is eight moons old. The next cat is Kitty, Simba's polar opposite. Kitty and Cormorant Paw are the best of friends. Kitty loves doing all the challenges that Cormorant Paw cooks up for her. Cormorant Paw has tried to convince her to join the clans multiple times, but since Kitty is declawed, she is afraid that she would not be able to earn her place in the clan. She is extremely fast and can beat Cormorant Paw in a race across the Thunder Pass. She is a seven moon old Egyptian mouse. The next kitty pet is a Peterball named Binks. 
He became part of Cormorant Paw's group when Kitty, Simba, and Cormorant Paw found him scrounging in garbage cans for food. Cormorant Paw caught him a squirrel, and he joined them on their adventures ever since. The owner is very old and often forgets to feed him, so that's why they found him scrounging in the dumpster. He loves his owner very much, and he can understand why she forgets about his meals. He is bossy when he is around his friends, but polite when he is around strangers. He is a little older than the rest of his friends at 11 moons old. The last cat that I'm going to draw in this video is a rogue named Ginger. She used to be a kitty pet. She was a show cat who took great pride in the ribbons that she won in competitions. One day, when she was exploring outside of her yard, she came across a trio of cocky birch clan apprentices. They asked her what she was doing outside of her tulip place, but she didn't know what the word tulip place meant. They started picking on her and she hissed at them, startled. The largest apprentice, whose name was Nightpaw, currently Nightface, stuck out a paw and slashed it at Ginger's ear, claws unsheathed. Ginger, who had never met a cat her age before, much less been attacked by one, ran away, her bleeding ears flat and her tail puffed out. When her two legs saw that her ear had been clawed, they realized she could not be used as a show cat anymore. They eventually stopped caring about her, letting her roam wherever and leaving her to catch her own food. Ginger loved going to cat shows, and when she realized that her and her two legs were not going to any more, she made the connection between her injured ear and the absence of shows. She ran away from her two legs because there was nothing for her there. She settled in a forest on the outskirts of Birch Clan territory, occasionally slinking back to the nearby two-leg place for a meal. She has harbored a resentment toward the cats of Birch Clan for many moons because of her destroyed dream of being a show cat, and will injure any Birch Clan cat severely if she encounters them on or near her territory. She is a 69-moon-old Persian. I forgot to record my original drawing for her, so I did an extra speed paint of her when she was deciding to leave her two legs behind. She is 13 moons old in this picture. And that's all for Birch Clan. 20 cats and 3 kittens. I'm never doing that again. Jokes aside though, this was a really fun challenge to do. I'm sorry the video was so long. I made it as short as I could. But if you want to see more hopefully shorter content like this, then I would consider subscribing. Thanks for watching!